when did your father uh, become interested in UFOs, and what um, what were some of his ideas and your memories well, and your sightings I, of UFOs? I don't really know when he got interested, but I know that I was there when he, uh, I think the first sighting that I had myself, I told you about, was in Maine, oh. in at the coast where we live, and um, we're doing some freshening of the atmosphere, cloud dusting, not cloud dusting, it's a door removal, gentle breezes just moving so the sky would be baby blue and the birds would sing and so on. Short operations, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. And uh, it was in the evening and uh, I, saw my first UFO when my husband called me. I was upstairs uh, down and said, Eva, Eva, come quick. And there were two lights sort of flying, rather large lights, big, bigger than Jupiter or any planets would be. And they came from behind a grove of trees to our southwest and they flew in front of some clouds and through some clouds, low cumulus, and they appeared back of the clouds. I mean, they were close by. I don't, I can't estimate distances, but I would say they were with, within a few hundred yards of us. And uh, I just, no sound, and it was, we felt in response to this freshening operator during the, as he was working on the cloud dust uh, for a freshening operation, uh, removing the stagnant energy and keeping the fresh stuff coming in, which we did very gently and briefly and so on. And uh, I was just amazed, you know, I was just, woo, what's that? And that's the first sighting that I personally had, but we had many sightings. Uh, the next remarkable incident, um, oh, and when my father published uh, the contact with space, he included the Air Force questionnaire about UFO sightings. And that was a very daring deed at the time, because that was you weren't allowed to say that the Air Force was even questioning you, and it was all very hidden. Um, and I don't know whether they still have that questionnaire or not now, but um, it involved estimating how many angles and how long and, and so on. And then uh, in the, I was there twice uh, visiting when my father pointed what he called the space gun, which was really a combination of the oral substance, which was the modified radium needle, which he had treated during the Oranor experiment and was now acting differently. For instance, didn't discharge in a charged electroscope anymore. And this needle was brought to a, a cloud bust. I mean, that was what we did in Oro Desert EA when we went out to the Arizona desert. Now, I don't know when this, I can't remember. I was just at Organon. It was towards dusk, and there was an object hanging in the sky towards the, I would say, southwest. Uh, and... Um, he, and I can't remember now whether he pointed the cloud buster at it with the aura or not at that uh, incident. And the, I saw the thing fading and disappearing. And I wasn't really, I was a little scared. I thought that was a dangerous thing to do. And I wasn't really sure whether it went behind clouds because it was getting dark or the mist layer or whatever. I didn't have a very strong reaction, but he felt that uh, they were um, sensitive to energy 
removal because when you're doing the plain cloud busting you are drawing into a well and it's like a modified lighting conductor takes so-called static charges away and I remember that um, he was um, interested at that point that it, there seemed to be two nodes of energy that he could influence this phenomena, uh, phenomenon uh, distant from the actual light in the sky. In other words, like nodes sensitive to this process of kind of, wrong, that you kind of work it yeah like and I can't I, I think I I don't remember that first time mm -hmm. and then in the autumn of 1954 just before we went to our expedition Oro Desert EA in Arizona in Tucson and I was um, had already uh, joined his team and I think I can't remember whether Peter and Bill were still there, but so, so was October, I think. And I saw another time, a second time, when uh, he influenced this uh, with blinking out and fading. And I, I don't, I wasn't very sure what was really happening. You know, I didn't really. But you can verify that he wasn't see, he wasn't making up the objects no, no. in the sky. No, I mean sky. that, that was a. a Bright uh, planet like. They weren't. Uh, yeah, but what was uh, in the. In the no, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't noiseless and it was hanging there, star like, mm -hmm. pretending to be a star. That I'm sure. What was your subjective impression and, of the UFOs when they were. Well, the most scared that I was, and I'm honest, terribly scared, was on Expedition Orb EA when our job got to be um, drawing from uh, a, an object that uh, used to appear uh, red, white, and blue blinking kind of thing in the direction of Tucson. We were probably 20 miles out of Tucson because uh, we were 10 miles beyond or the end of the town, uh, which was Oracle Junction. So uh, it was quite a ways to the center. It would have taken you a good hour to drive there. And, um, well, what, what scared me, and I was really, you know, when I, oh, I should backtrack. I was there as an observer the night that the Oro was flown in a small plane, dragged behind in this thing that Dr. Silver had devised behind a rope, and he, it shouldn't get near metal, so, because that activated it. I mean, the counts went high on the specially charged Geiger counters, so they dragged it. And we were waiting for that plane to arrive at Tucson Airport, not the main commercial airport, but a p place where the small planes landed. And it might have been a separate, uh, no, small plane. But I remember there was just a small hut and a few people. Anyway. What impressed me that night is that as this plane was approaching that area and finally landed pretty much late in the evening, like 11, 10, 11, um, I just saw an awful lot of flares dropping. In other words, it was like flying star night, but then it was the time of meteorite, you know, the, the showers, uh, it was November, I guess, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and but I remember saying, I mean, I felt very moved because uh, <laughs> everywhere I looked, these things, they were not just flying across the sky, they were dropping <laughs> everywhere I looked. And uh, I mean, that's unexplained to this day, to, in my mind. So I, this aura being moved did something to somebody. And then, uh, you know, we used it, and um, we used it by br bringing it near metal on the cloud buster, which is another thing. But getting on with the business of uh, what my reactions, personal reactions to all this, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I was 
out of my element. I mean, I'd been a country doctor, and all of a sudden I broke up my practice. I wasn't prepared for what was happening. And it was a, over my head, and I wasn't functioning too well because I didn't know what was going on. And basically, my father, in his trying to digest the new, didn't transmit too much. So when I read the Aurob Desert Report, I said, aha, aha, this is what happened, this is what happened. But I saw the phenomena. I mean, we were usually at uh, this uh, building, I mean, a set of ranches, low buildings. There was a staircase to sort of a platform, like a balcony on the roof, which was ideal. And uh, that's where he, we had daily meetings, what was the order of the day, what was the mail bringing. And um, I just, uh, I couldn't express my uh, distress or my not knowing. But anyway, we were up on that little roof one night, and um, I saw a light coming to Mount Lemon, which was towards our east, looking north, mm -hmm. towards our east. And this light went, boom, boom. That's not what a meteor does, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not behavior. So I saw some odd lights that did odd things. I would say almost a sharp V, less than 30 degrees. And um, soundless, again. And I was scared. The, the job that we had between maybe January, February. And I had to hand in all my notebooks when I didn't work there anymore, so I have no records of all this. But uh, the, our job was to draw from this red, white, and blue blinking thing that was hanging over Tucson every night. And um, so I was scared. I mean, Bill was exhausted. He had to sleep. I was there alone on this cloudbuster platform and you in were the middle of a desert. Against the UFOs that and were coming I was, in and well, you were to draw I, from them? Well, the purpose was to draw from them. And that wouldn't, at that point, I had resistance because I didn't want to be at war with anybody. And my whole... Uh, and he uh, conceived of I had as having problems. hostile I mean, head. I think he may have been right. But uh, the first sighting that I described in Maine, where the two objects uh, flew by be behind and before clouds very close, uh, then uh, I had a very paradisic uh, energy experience at the air gun, very luminous and like in paradise, lovely. I feel that in this garden here, you know. And so I wasn't convinced that all of them are necessarily evil. Mm -hmm. I thought they were different kinds. I don't know why and what they were doing. And I didn't want to be drawn from them. That's the main thing. I carried out like a soldier is told to do something, and I, we were, as my father called it then, the battle of the universe. and The planetary he, valley forge. Whatever he called it, and I wasn't that warlike. And, right. you know, I tend towards Quaker pacifism. And so I was an unwilling participant at that point. I did what I should do, but with fear and trembling. Really, that's the cold and contracted and feeling uneasy about being involved with this. And um, there were things that happened, like all the, we grounded the cloudbusters into an artesian well, and we had trouble. The sand was filling up that well. Uh, the water systems weren't working. Um, uh, how do, should I say? It was not, I certainly wasn't an equal in even discussing the problems or what, what was puzzling us and what was happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I think now in retrospect is very significant that I read in a book about the onset of, uh, um, that in January of 1951 was also the time around the Orno experiment, like the ending, when uh, uh, they began to have a series of bomb explosions on the Nevada flats and, you know, past the old Alamogordo first one. And uh, I think that our spreading 
high counts may have had something to do, but that isn't something we were aware of because they didn't tell you when they were exploding nuclear bombs. So well, altogether, the world got to be a scary place. Before that, I felt okay in the world. Whatever happened, the atmosphere was nice, the clouds were white, you know. And I think I was right to feel uneasy because it's gotten only worse since then, you know. So my whole relationship to that project, I mean, I'm glad I saw the phenom phenomena, but I am still um, uneasy about the whole thing, our relationship, you know. And I don't know what Bill felt. He was, uh, he had been in the Navy and he knew how to be a soldier and he was willing to participate and be the runner around diplomat representative of the Organ Institute and, and, you know, but it got him in the stomach. So he didn't say much, but he reacted physically. Mm -hmm. And so did McCullough. So your husband, Bill Moise, went to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base yeah, at one point. that's on the way out to Arizona. On the way out to and do the that expedition. Is the, well, it's written up in contact with mm -hmm. space. I wasn't there. But I know he was very, uh, he had a hard time getting through to them mm -hmm. after they made uh, appointments. And he was going to notify them of sort of like a personal messenger of William Reich the motor principle and the equations were being offered to the Air Force, you know? And uh, I still feel bad about all that. They really, and when I read the book Beyond uh, above, Top Secret, Above Top Secret, above top secret I, think, beyond, I felt so bad when I saw that all the time they knew, not only about Schauberger's uh, uh, UFOs, but about uh, the crashed one in uh, New Mexico in 1947. And I really, I feel incensed. They let this man die in prison when he, his brain was so unique. I feel um, above all grief about the, the, the loss of the lifetime of, of what my father might have still accomplished with maybe 10, 15 more years of life. I mean, he was so effective in, in what he did. So I feel very badly about the muffing, the, the real criminal. Uh, I mean, if they would just leave somebody alone to do their work. I mean, my father financed the whole thing, and I mean, at great personal sacrifice, uh, it's not true that he profiteered of it. And uh, I, I feel that's all tied up because one reaction to the injunction that he had was to make this expedition to Arizona, to the west, to the real dry regions of the USA. And um, what might have been, if they, if they just hadn't intervened with his hard work, you know, he had to defend himself legally. It was just har harassing, harassing to take up your lifetime and your energy. And that's really the purpose of it, to tease you. So that poisoned that whole period in Arizona. And one job that I had besides housekeeping was uh, typing up the documents. I did that also in, um, in, uh, at Alban Towers in that uh, Washington era. But I was working with documents and organization of documents on Oro Desert. I think it was the you know, I was busy making tables of contents. I think it was the red thread that I worked on at that time, the red thread uh, about a conspiracy to destroy the, uh, the, the discovery of the life energy. So we were under attack. It wasn't just like an expedition. The attack came from the USA, I mean, criminal mm -hmm. government. It's not a bona fide government at this point. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I need to say that. And, you know, I, I'm just still incensed, hurt, and I don't want to play their games anymore. Well, it's easy to see what a threat Reich posed to them because he started out in 1951 talking about looking at um, the effects of radiation sickness at a time when uh, the government was saying there was really nothing to worry about. 
then he um, immediately started wandering around the countryside in Arizona and Tucson in these sensitive military bases taking Geiger counter readings of nuclear radiation background counts, which were ever increasing, and he was getting wild readings. When they had the line, and the line has been about UFOs, has been international. That's an international conspiracy. And I, I mean, enough people have seen UFOs, so it was a Gallup poll, I don't know what year, there were 10 million people. It's amazing. In America, who had seen something. I really think that as papers get revealed uh, that uh, under Freedom of Information Act, like what O'Leary did with these experiments on radiation exposure, uh, what's in uh, God, the Gods of Eden about people being sprayed with germ warfare, our own government spraying us, and uh, that's uh, where the AIDS epidemic probably is. Uh, manufactured virus, okay. Well, that's but, the point being, is that as yeah. we learn more about that period of the history, yeah. the Cold War era, but it's the just more a minute sense... ago, as history goes. Sure, okay. sure, it was just it's five minutes yeah. ago in terms okay. of uh, exactly. human history, but yeah. this is, your father was dealing with important things, that, well, he wasn't a madman, and, and No, and he was right that there's out. a conspiracy, and he was right they were all in cahoots, and it's coming out more and more. But the, the saga, you know, he's both criminal, insane, and look at this crackpot. That is worldwide, uh, organized, spread. And uh, I'm just, I mean, they have had a campaign of disinformation. And that's why my honesty and my going forth like a little somebody, you know, I, uh, God has opened, I've spoken in 31 countries, uh, you know, over 18 years. I've and my whole purpose has been to humanize the other parts of the earth. You know, never mind about the USA with all their conceit and their untruths, you know? Because if you're pretending to be the most democratic and advanced nation on earth and you're doing that kind of thing, you know, you're worst, I think, because you're the most, um, well, lying, deceitful, whatever. So. I, I just really, I mean, I have very much flirted with the idea of leaving the USA. I almost emigrated to Australia, but that's no better. It's not, no, there's no place on earth. You know, I've come to the conclusion we have to make the new world, and that's what I'm busy doing. And I really, there was a point at which I decided I couldn't do all this science. I'm not a real scientist. I could do good medicine. I could, but... I mean, I'm obsolete now in med medicine. I mean, I'm not keeping up with the way they are doing it now. But I, I made a conscious decision um, that I was going to concentrate on human transformation because until human beings had a sense of their inner truth left or not destroyed, then uh, there was no hope. You know, I got involved with the so-called growth movement, humanistic growth movement, I mean, that happened, I earned my living with that. But then they got into Leary and um, all these guys with their drugs and, and, and enhancing the mind with drugs, which Hitler did, I just learned last night. Hitler, a peyote and cocaine addict? What? <laughs> I, that's news to me, I never, I knew he was crazy. But... Anyway, so I am, I'm trying to give a, uh, be a model of a, <clears throat> Um, emperor's clothes kind of person, a rooftopper, I call it. No more secrecy. No, uh, what they do now is reveal your secrets to misuse them, but to have a, a sense of honesty that is uh, rock bottom. And you can talk about ethics, but the whole thing is just rotten. And uh, the government in, in this, and it's all structural. I mean, it's drilled into children and that whole business that you have acquainted with, with me with with compulsory education it's very hard to escape from all that really the missiles arm themselves wow. the missiles armed themselves and got ready to launch and there was nothing that the Russian military could do to pull it back under their control 
and the, and and this they it went around and they interviewed military people. The entire town had now, seen these things. How come they didn't have multiple explosions? Because they it went they shut it back down. They disarmed it after a, that certain period. But it was now, just that's like when did that occur? I don't remember the year, but the ABC News report was this past year, and it occurred probably in the seventies, sometime in the seventies. Okay, I have this book about the um, UFO hanging over the nuclear plant. Mm -hmm. um, something about Connecticut River Valley. Mm -hmm. If somebody Why did, well, I mean, I'll send it to you. Well, I don't need it anymore. That's, I mean, that's one of the things that um, that has been most reported is that they're they're hovering over military installations, which brings up a really interesting point, is that we've spent all these billions and hundreds of trillions of dollars on military equipment, and these things can just fly right in. And immobilize them. And immobilize them, or set them off, or whatever they want. An anti-electronic effect. Right, and they can do whatever they want, and therefore, what? why are we paying for all these defense when we can't defend ourselves from these UFOs no. that are there? Um, well, the whole thing is really... Um, well, anyway, so I think it's important. What was important to my father was the propulsive power. What is the thing that is anti-electronic? And I've had that kind of experiences. I had several times when I was trying to make the uh, property list for Organon, uh, after the death of my father, I brought up an uh, assessor, because it had to be by law assessed. And he had a Polaroid camera it jammed. And I've had many, many more experiences where the electronic instruments in that environment didn't work. In Ohio, yeah. he transmitted to them the um, equations that your father had he worked out. He didn't give them, he offered them. He, okay, he offered he offered them, and they promised that they would take care of the gravitational equations that your father... Now, what well, was that? They, How did that... Well, that was his big trump. He didn't give it to them. They didn't accept it. Oh, they did Nothing didn't. more. No, did. no. He informed them that these, the motor principle and the equations, anti-gravity equations, existed. Okay. He, like an emissary. Right. I'm offering you this. And nothing happened with that. Well, nothing so, happened, but I'm, I'm almost, po I just read it, and I'm almost positive that they did accept this from him at that point. No? He got an appointment with somebody lower down, not the person that he'd made the uh -huh. appointment with, and he transmitted. They know these two things existed. I mean, he got as far as right. informing them, I'm coming for Dr. Willem Wright to offer you this. But the equations, uh, um, well, they're in the KR to the X number system, and the motor principle is in a film that shows the motor working when it just went near it, this thing started turning. And uh, it's not mine. I'm, the, I'm just. There's your glass of uh You had one yes. earlier. Come on. Okay, but I'm interested in the fact that he based his. Defense, he said, I'm not, uh, these volumes were secret and suppressed evidence, not all of them, but volume, um, the one about contact with space. And by the way, that's not clear. If you read the book, Contact with Space, because he, he had printed 1,000 copies of that. And he told me, if anything happens to me, please get them out. And took Higgins years and years, and she's charging huge sum for, for them, and she hasn't brought it on the market, which is not what he wanted and what I transmitted uh, to her to do. So the important thing is that when he read the Rubel report and what little got through the secrecy, first of all, you know, they were denying that the whole thing exists, the whole phenomenon. And then um, after he uh, said, well, they have questionnaires, and they're taking it very seriously, and they're shutting up people. You know, everything that's in above top secret. Uh, he said, 
And my father said, aha, they're using the organ energy. They're riding these streams. They are, and he had this uh, system where the swings could be any uh, distance, you know, and we knew that something was rotating. He had some things that probably Schauberger and he should have gotten together because Schauberger had the principle of the spinning wave in practice from the trouts in the river. And he made a UFO that uh, the Hitler people knew existed and worked. So what happened to that discovery? That must have been followed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you see, when, when they said, what are UFOs, maybe it's secret uh, USA, maybe it's secret German, maybe it's, you know, uh, I said poo poo, nobody has that uh, principle, but Schauberger's. I almost flipped when I saw that last week when you gave me the book. Schauberger had an actual thing that went through the ceiling with levity. So, uh, well, I think I wish they'd gotten together because my father had it in astronomical terms. He saw that this Kreiselwelle, K-R to the X, K-R is Kreiselwelle, a pendulum wave. And he saw that everything was related uh, if you took the lengths of the pendulum, it doesn't matter what weight is hanging on the end. So he made this mass-free set of equations, and he converted all the equations of motion, the Newtonian ones and everything, uh, into a mass-free. The factor n disappears, you know? So I think he really had the, the tail, and he saw that wave and particle, wave and particle, but it's opposite to the formulation of Einstein, because in Einstein, the inertia is the maximum with the speed of light. And here, the mass forms when the thing slows down and starts spinning in situ. That's total. There's several really uh, uh, collected opposite functions. So my father thought the most important thing is that they let me go to prison when I'm telling them that I have this whole technology in my head. It's not worked out, but it's the, the beginnings, you know? And if they knew about Schauberger, because they knew what Hitler had, then they knew that there's a spinning wave that works. I mean, they let him die in prison. And he, I really thought until the end he would be whisked away, you know, saved so the brain could start working in a good environment. Not that. And that I really can't forgive him. Well, why do you think if he had the uh, a good understanding of the propulsion systems of UFOs, why did they let him rot in jail? Why why stop a thing that's self-supporting and self-financed and working? And I think that is criminal. It isn't not helping, but to impede it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's. Uh, it's more than just criminal. It's a real conspiracy to destroy the discovery of life energy on Earth. So he thought, I'm keeping this, he thought also panic on Earth. If people think we have visited, we're not the last word, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was uh, sympathetic, the kind of panic that people go through that Mach describes, you know? And uh, so human beings weren't ready, and maybe it took another 50 years. Well, they destroyed Schauberger, too, it seems. They really yeah. ruined him. And, uh, and So like, what's the idea? I don't why? understand it myself. I don't understand why they would... Uh, I mean, if You Hitler, know that they had they had at least a crashed uh, saucer but why? In, in Roswell. Yeah, I if know. And that was already body. the big shock of my life, that thing. At that same time, that in same the early time. 50s, uh, 47, 48. he was, well, the attack of uh, Brady started in 47. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, what is this? So why, uh, what is so forbidden about working and accepting that there's a life energy? And this is still going on, you know, this, uh, there's a struggle going on with Harar and Heiko Lasek in Berlin and De Meo is hurt because some people say, oh, it's just this and just that, what is called uh, air germs, my father right. got very angry. Give it a name and discuss yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, everything is explained the way every phenomenon, instead of seeing, ha, huh, something doesn't uh, add up. Right. Why don't we investigate that different function? So I don't understand what's, uh, 
I understand that they were afraid of panic, that uh, if people found out you, 10 million people have seen the UFOs, like the Gallup poll, uh, at least a decade ago, I don't know how long ago, maybe more, that they found that so many people have seen. And if you are in the outlying areas, I mean, I've been in Tasmania on a hop farm, I told you about the uh, farmer, that the whole area of Tasmania was uh, had sightings that night, and they look up and there are these hop uh, frames that are very high. They're probably as high as this. I saw the frames. Mm -hmm. And uh, they thought it was just uh, at first that a helicopter was looking at it, but then they realized the thing was soundless and there was a mothership and uh, little ones came out and spread all over Tasmania and there were hundreds of sightings and hundreds of people saw them that night. But it was located over this uh, hop farm which was sort of in the center of Tasmania, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So I met the man whose farm it was, and he told me the story. So any time you're away from uh, where there are masses of people, you'll see them. So we really need to go by the, uh, the Freedom, of Freedom of Information Act to the Supreme Court, who vetoed, who said what. It's all so secret. Right. So we need to be, become rooftoppers. We need to stop with all that secrecy. So you can misuse people's secrets. But if everybody were open, no more secret services. That's really doing the world in. When they uh, murder, and you know, she knows about El Salvador and what happened in South America. But I think it's really vital that we open the lid on secrecy in the secret services. Nobody needs it anymore. You know? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, I think that they are the guilty ones. I mean, you know. Well, the, um, when uh, your husband went, it says they're in contact with space, yeah. that your, when your husband went to write Patterson, he had an appointment to meet with uh, the chief guy there. Yeah, but he didn't name. meet the chief. He met some. No. He, you know why? He, but he canceled the chief. The, the, the head of the base said he had a meeting with a group from the CIA who had just flown in from Washington. Really? And that's why he couldn't meet with Bill, yeah. yeah. I don't remember that. I just, I really haven't read it that often. I just know that I, that's my proof that we were dealing with, you don't just ask for an appointment to transmit as an emissary the offer of the motor and the equations, right. the mass free equations. And, you know, nobody knows what's in that math. I don't know whether it exists still. It's my fault. There, I should have really kept it or made copies. He did several things. He did redefined the second as having, uh, the minute as having 100 seconds. The pendulum. Uh, yeah, he, um, he took liberties. He changed some of the math. Let's see here. Let's start at the beginning. And you have to understand what he was doing that's different. Okay, first of all, let, let's, let me tell you that we've done, we started in a Freedom of Information Act search, and they're telling, trying to tell us that they have nothing on Wilhelm Reich at where Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, no records of any of this. Yeah. Now we, now yeah, they we. They received it. They, uh, we know, uh, yeah, they, I know that they have these things, and, and. Um, it's total denial, and the denial is all through the UFO thing. They have to admit that there is a civilization visiting from somewhere, and not Earth, which is uh, ahead, but is very bad off um, organotically. Um, because the, what I read in that little um, above top secret, the crashed UFO, they were very skinny, they had a blood without red blood cells, they don't look very healthy, you know? I mean, they looked like little, they weren't strong by our definition of what health is. Right. So, uh, and they, they, they indicate uh, we have a desert development on our, whatever place they come from. And, uh, you know, the, the, motive, the motivation of the UFO 
UFOs. It's really that. And I don't think it's going into the paranormal so much. I don't believe that. You think it's a natural, it's their biological it's entities? Their, that yeah, maybe they have ways of hibernating you while you travel, or, you know. But I don't think it's as esoteric as another dimension. You don't think that they're, yeah, no. like coming from sp uh, future times or it's oh, our, no, the no, human no, race? No, no, no. I think that's totally misleading. This is very concrete. I mean, I don't have any evidence that we're dealing with occultism. And I think that's, the, I don't deny that that's the, the people who had these abduction experiences uh, report like the little mini uh, sensors that they put in and so Implants. on. And they, they're trying to breed a hybrid and all that makes sense. That they, they've lost their place of living. It turned dry. Maybe it's Mars, maybe it's further. You know, who knows? But I don't think that's the important thing. What is this? Certainly observing us. I and mean, if they were at war with us, they would have been more warlike by now, right? Well, they can't fight us fa face to face because they're little suckers. <laughs> they're only this high. No, but some <laughs> creatures that might be robots are six foot and more. Oh, the know. people, okay. Uh, there may be different kinds different of UFOs. Kinds. I think there are different kinds. Some of them smell like sulfur and have mm -hmm. giants that may be robots. Who knows? But I, I, the, the main thing is Earth is relying on electronic devices entirely. And the life energy devices are this way. And that's what my father knew, because he had found Geiger Miller tubes that went silent and then suddenly came back to life weeks later in a high organ atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had um, really, he, and you know, you can attack this, talks to an electrophysicist, and I'm not an, a scientist, but I saw his phenomena, and they're unexplainable by their standards. A uh, piece of radium should, for I don't know how many years, at least 5,000 years, uh, discharge a charged electroscope. And I saw it staying up, and I knew they're, they're wrong. This is something different. The, uh, the important thing is that the yeah. Air Force did receive the information. Absolutely. So yeah. help me God. Well, it's all right here. It's yeah. You can see that no, they absolutely. notarized it all. Yes, they so did, they're... and they're just uh, deniers. They're right. liars, liars, and right. liars. And they're lying about everything. And I think it's time for rooftoppers. I mean, Clinton is as bad as all of them. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think I'm very disappointed. I didn't mean to depress you about that. I shouldn't have, no, no, no. I shouldn't have mentioned no, no, anything. No, no, but, uh, but really, you know, I also think... But it's in the structure. I think they're it's not the even... It's uh, not one person to blame. I mean, it's the structure. No, but the structure can't stand a piece of truth, you know? And that's the terrible thing. That's, again, getting back to my decision. I'm going to leave all of this. I can't deal with it. I'm going to work on human transformation and put little seeds of something new in the world if I can. I really think it's a systematic evasion of truth that is so severe that uh, they'd rather die than they go to, you know, I mean, go under as a civilization totally. I, I think that uh, uh, I'm not religious about organomy, but I think that the life energy discovery explains so much of what's happening now, namely the dying of both the energy in the organism, the, the cancer rates going up like crazy. They're going to be 100% very shortly. This is truth, 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 so help me God. And the human race, if it wants to survive and keep that earth alive, needs to listen to some of these warnings that Willem Reich issued about desert development, death of the life energy envelope. And uh, it's all getting truer the longer the time el elapses. I think the people who hide and aren't willing for the, the space age to be a vitalistic one rather than a mechanical one, I think the new age is going to look different. And uh, I don't care whether there are many worlds and many dimensions of existence. I think the, we are on Earth in living bodies and we need to deal where we are right now. And I really think the UFO thing is threatening to go like the 
drug epidemic into something that you uh, that doesn't have application. The point is they're visiting us. Obviously, we have the only green, blue jewel that still has water and so on in this solar system, and we're a desirable piece of real estate. And obviously, they have to wear a space helmet in our atmosphere, so I think the idea is reasonable that trying to increase the amount of CO2 and methane and all these gases that they can so that they can tolerate, live there, yeah. so they can live here. That makes sense to me. Right. As we are getting blue, blue and blue, more cyanotic, you know, uh -huh. uh, they may be beginning to thrive. Right. And uh, that makes sense, that maybe it's a slow war of attrition. On March 20th, 1956, 10 p.m., a thought of a very remote possibility entered my mind, which, I fear, will never leave me again. Am I a spaceman? Do I belong to a new race on Earth bred by men from outer space and embraces with Earth women? Are my children offspring of the first interplanetary race? Has the melting pot of interplanetary society already been created on our planet as the melting pot of all Earth nations was established in the USA 190 years ago? Or does, or does this thought relate to things to come in the future? I request my right and privilege to have such thoughts and to ask such questions without being threatened to be jailed by any administrative agency of society. Okay, because remember, this is a court... He wrote this, this is report a court document. for the court, mm -hmm. for the Supreme Court, which, however, didn't review this case. Sure. And we need to exactly check out how come, who denied review, who was responsible for that decision. And this needs to be reopened, because he was so right. Right. And that is a blight well, on the United States. I don't know if anybody ever suggested at that point that the aliens were interbreeding with human beings. Well, I, I, I was shocked when, when I read this. But this now it's a commonplace. Yeah. It's almost when you have John Mack, professor at Harvard, talking about it as, as if it's a assumed yeah. thing. Well, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think um, uh, that isn't really my concern right. right now. But he had the right to wonder about that. And when I read John Mack just recently in Philadelphia a month ago, I said, wow, wow, that's all about what my father's postulated. <laughs> that shocked me. So when I put it in the it wouldn't Supreme, be shocking today Supreme it's Court, and also, you know, should a UFO have landed on, on the desk of the White House or something? Remember, right, it right. starts with like that. What do they yes, accept and they have proof? hovered across. What is proof? What a is proof, proof was all the time in Roswell right. and in Dayton, Ohio, where they brought those little bodies and, right. and those smashed chips. Right. So what, you know, who made the decision? I think the Committee of 12 needs to be investigated. MJ-12. MJ-12. And who had a right to make that decision from all over Earth? Uh, the common report says, because there's no such technology on Earth, Therefore, this doesn't exist. And then they kill the man that has the embryo of a new technology and let Schauberger die, who also. So there's such double-speak bastards. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the court case, which you will, because I'm going to make sure you get the originals, you'll see that it was totally like what they were talking about, did he ship accumulators across into Sage line? That's illegal. And then his, I'm having things of national importance, national, I hate the word national security. So he was playing into their hands, their hands yeah, when he kept it. his uh, evidence secret. It's called secret and suppressed evidence. So nobody ever saw this, and this is real dynamite. Mm -hmm. And this needs to be on every newsstand. And maybe we do it because it's public property. It got filed with the courts. So I invite you to get this out in paperback, and never mind about copyright. Well, okay, so what that leaves us with exactly five books in print that Wright wrote, I mean, that remain in print, and um, that wasn't it. He's written a lot of books. Here is uh, Genitality, Early Writings, Volume 1. 
ether, god, devil, cosmic superimposition. Out of print. All of these are out of print. Murder of Christ. People in trouble. Reich speaks of Freud. The invasion of compulsory sex morality. The Bion experiments. Passion of youth. Selected writings. The impulsive character. The bioelectric investigation of sexuality and anxiety. Children of the future. The cancer biography. And sex poll essays. Whoa! Okay, that's listen a little more. And record of a friendship with A.S. Neal, the sexual revolution. More sex poll essays. All of these books are not, not available because, well, the executrix, again, Mary Boyd Higgins, will not put them back. Whoa. <laughs> They're just jumping off the shelves. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about Mary Higgins and the whole publishing I history. I put it in there. Did you know that con uh, character analysis is now out of print? No. It's a it joke. just no, it just happened. I mean, I called <coughs> I called the publisher yeah. and they said it's out of print. Okay, somebody so is trying to only, get it all off the market. These are the these are the books that are in print. Um, Listen little man, Mass Psychology of Fascism and Function of the Orgasm. And that's it. Well, the no bion volume extra. three needs to be out. Everything else is out of print. Everything. That well, then she needs her own publishing company. Or you do what I told you. Get the copyright laws for students who want to study something unavailable, not in yeah. print. And you just give it out as a student's edition. Right. In, in spiral bound, uh, no book, you know, right. just uh, copied from the... Uh, records for students of this subject right. that were already in copyright and in print a lot, once upon a time, and time. And uh, I don't know. I don't understand what's going on with Higgins now. I've lost track. It's pretty amazing. I mean, well, maybe uh, she was put in there to quen quench the whole thing, and that is more and more possible because she's acting like she owns it and she's not interested in the world knowing. She's adopted this attitude that he was not into followers and the masses, having been very concerned with the masses for most of his life. So I don't know what's happening. I don't, I have no contact with him.